Hey guys, welcome to Terrenkind once again. I'm Tom, and in this series, I'm taking through the stages that I took in renovating my garden for under 200 bucks, baby. Let's get to it. In the last episode, we conquered Branch Mountain, made a lovely wee space to build a shelter in. Take a look at our very detailed design. As you can see, it's gonna be quite something. You could say we're putting the den in garden. <laughs> So firstly, we need to dig some holes to place in some upright timbers. So a good thing we chose a day where the ground is frozen solid, eh? And take a look at those picking skills. See Bess actually sporting a new line of work gear today. It's quite majestic. Now once the holes are dug, I strip some of the bigger, greener branches that are quite bendy. Now I can hopefully bend them to meet in the middle of, at the top, like a sort of bendy pyramid hut thing. Now you get it, just check the designs. Perfection. Popping the branches into the holes, patting down the soil to get our uprights. Nice. Just trying to cut into them just a little bit, just because just to make them just a little bit more bendy. Uh, wishing I had a decent saw with me. Really wishing. And is it going to bend? Well, <laughs> no, it just snapped. Who'd have guessed? What do you mean who'd have guessed? I guessed. Of course, why would you listen to me? You're a perfectly sensible girlfriend with great ideas. I told you this wouldn't work, and now if you're not here in the cold, trying to bend bloody branches and spending ages and cutting them, my fingers are really sore, I could have been inside with a cup of tea by now, if you'd just listen to me. But no, of course, nobody's ideas are as good as yours. It's the exact same thing that happened with the bloody sofas at the end of a Four days of 12 hour shift to get me to go and lift a f***ing sofa on the roof and take it home and lift it up bloody stairs and I hadn't had tea yet and I just, I, I mean, I didn't even want a second sofa and you snapped it into bits. So I guess these designs are useless now. So much work. So we're just going to wing it from now, I guess. Uh, we've got four uprights, going to have to attach a roof somehow. But I think I'll add two more uprights at the back, uh, tie them to this big stump just for extra support. It would be quite nice to incorporate this into the shelter too. And I'm using jute twine to tie these in, which is pretty cheap, uh, but it is the first expenditure of the renovation. Uh, I'll put links in the description for everything I use that I had to buy. Um, maybe do a price list at the end of each video. Just uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you guys want. And I'm starting to build up the frame for the walls now. Initially I just tied them on with wire because it's just much easier, much quicker than twine. But we then finish them off by wrapping a bunch of twine around, uh, not just for strength, but also just to look nice. Nice. But like all the tasks so far, it is quite boring, repetitive, and my nips are like f***ing diamonds. So alas, I got Beth to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's coming together now. Uh, I want to make an archway for the door, uh, which should look pretty good. So I'm going to use these thin green branches. They are super bendy, not like those uprights earlier. <clears throat> so these will be tied onto the uprights either side of the door, so we can bend them so that the ends meet in the middle, and we can just tie them off. Uh, two branches for the archway is of course not going to be enough to hold up the roof uh, so I added a bunch more and as you can see the weather is just fantastic perfect for doing really fiddly knots with your frostbitten fingers so I decided to leave it a few days till the weather warmed you know just slightly above frozen bollocks degrees and the frame's in good shape now it's time to get the roof on there much like the rest of the frame, I'm tying on some big branches that span from back to front. Uh, but I'm not stripping these, I want all the little spindly bits on there just to give it lots of surface area. And then simply cutting off the overhanging bits. Nice. Of course the roof still has a couple of leaks, so let's keep going. I'm stripping some skinny ones here for the next step and I'm just going to grab a bunch and weave them in between the lengths of the roof which should tie the whole roof together 
uh, without having to use twine and should increase the strength nicely. Yeah, maybe not that one. <laughs> and remember those pine trees we found under the mountain? Do you? Do you? No, because I didn't put it in the video. But we did. Well, they're going to have a purpose here. I'm just tying these down to the frame with some more twine. Just a couple more. The sooner the better, so I can get out of this rain a bit. As we live in Scotland, a place where umbrellas go to die, we added a little extra security by tying on these branches to the front just so a light breeze doesn't just whip them off. Uh, they also flatten out the roof quite nicely, makes it look just a little bit neater. And there we have it, look, a roof. Kinda, kinda sorta roof, kinda sorta waterproof, one too. Kinda looks like a tiki hut. Be drinking mimosas in here come summertime. Uh, hopefully the pine needles last and don't just blow away. Uh, but but judging on how many of them fell off into my eyeballs while I was putting the roof on, that is a good possibility that they will just blow away. But, but, I do have a plan for that possibility that I shall reveal later. For that though, we need to finish the walls. Uh, I'm just using the same technique as the roof with the thin green super bendy branches. Uh, you know, the ones that don't know they're dead yet. <laughs> Poor wee guys. Taking them, weaving them into the frame of the walls. And these won't need tying, they're just kind of like wedged in there and should just strengthen it up nicely. And this is going to take a while, so let's time lapse, baby. <laughs> gone round, picked up all the stray branches left, uh, but that pile is gone. Adios. Uh, gonna need some more though, uh, but these big boys over here, they've got some branching off that I can use, I just cut them off, so more cutting. <laughs> Yay. But yeah, I'll finish that off. Uh, the more I add though, the more difficult it seems to get. It gets much stiffer, uh, that's what she said. And the holes, they get much tighter. That's what he said. But hey, I have a shelter now. Still want the rain to stop though. Enough for today, I reckon. Not really much left to do now. Uh, the floor definitely needs something doing with it. It's just a bit of a mud patch right now. Uh, the soil though is much higher at the back than it is in the doorway. So we just decided to make the whole floor a step up from the rest of the garden. And I dug out that step off screen because I'm just totally badass like that. Uh, popping down some weed proof matting. We're, we're going to have a path that leads up to the shelter, which is why that matting is just flying off out the door. Now we've got that down, I'm going to add these beefy ends in to make the step again, which I cut to size off screen. <laughs> so badass. And pulling the matting back over so that we can level out the floor up behind the uh, beefians. And that way we'll have the matting running under the path, up the back of these logs and then over the top of the floor just to hold all that dirt in place. And because the soil's quite a bit higher on the inside of the walls than the outside, we realised we kind of needed a little some like log edging around the outside at the bottom. Just putting some logs down that are sort of roughly level just to help hold that dirt in place. Yeah, look at it now, nice and level. Uh, we can pull the matting back over the top, uh, cut a few more bits of matting just to cover up them gaps. Of course it doesn't look great right now but remember that pile of tiny branches we had left on the last video? But we're gonna make use of them here and turn this floor into a forest floor. And hey, even the fork we found is getting some action. Just covering it up with these little sticks and stomping them down flat. <laughs> Look who's just having the best time. She needs this. And look, a floor. Now this will mulch down, mulch, mulch. Mal, milch, ma no, that's not right. Mulch. I'm going with mulch. This will mulch down over time. Doesn't sound right now. 
This will mulch down over time. Uh, eventually plants will start growing. Uh, but with the matting underneath, any plants and weeds and stuff that grow up from it will just be, you could easily pick them out when they're little. But now it's time for the final step. So you can see here, there are vines growing up in the bushes and along the floor. And just, well, it's just absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to pull some of these up and plant these around the base of the back walls. Uh, don't worry though, vines are like crazy hardy plants. They should survive just fine. Should. Hello, shoulds. Hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe in this video, but they should do. Hopefully. Given a few years, those vines should grow and just totally fill out and engulf the back wall. So I have like an all natural green wall, uh, which will not only provide a little bit of privacy from next door's garden, but it should help improve the overall strength of the structure, just tying everything together. And we've got a free hand-me-down table and chairs of best parents, which fits beautifully inside. Look at that. Might need a little lick of paint and a touch-up here and there in the future, but we'll see. I also stuffed a few vines into the roof. So you can see, despite my absolutely expert roof-making skills, there are just, just a fair few little holes. Yeah, just, yeah. So I just shove the vines up there yeah. will they survive probably not maybe i think maybe they do hopefully they do probably won't but even if they do die the ones growing up the walls will get to the roof eventually and grow across it uh, we're just putting some nicer climbers along the front walls uh, we don't want the front walls totally engulfed we want to be able to just see through them a little bit into the garden uh, but we're putting in some nice climbers that should flower up and have some nice, beautiful, beautiful smelling, lovely flowers. Beautiful smelling, beautiful smelling, beautiful looking. Flowers along the front, which should finish it off yeah, beautifully. Very nice. We christened her the nook, as it's a wee nook, just, just to sit in and have a little cuppa in the morning, you know. I'll definitely have to do an update video on this one once the plants have grown up a bit and consumed it. Turn it into a little plant cave of sorts. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. And thank you so, so much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, do all the things, you know it. And I'll see you in the next video. TK out.